It's Friday, the weekend is here, nearly, kind of, depends what you're doing I guess. Um, right, today's video, we're taking a look at the contracts of the players whose contracts are expiring at the end of this season. We've got six first team players registered with us. Now we need to decide on what we're going to do. We're going to ignore the January transfer window, probably, and we're going to go hypothetical. R renew or release, simple as that. And, um, well, we're going to ignore David Moyes, by the way. Moyes, Pierce, Nolan, I'm aware of all their contracts up as well, but that's for another video. This is just about the six first team players. Um, right, who we're starting with? We'll go straight into the deep end. Mark Noble. He'll be 34 at the end of the season. When the season finishes, Mark Noble will be 34 years old. Um, it's come out in the last day or so that he's been going in before the first team training in order to help with the training of the academies. I guess it's ideal preparation for after playing. But the question is, is this his final season, you know, as a first team player at West Ham? And it's difficult without knowing what the crowds are going to do. I don't think it will be his final season if there's no fans in the stadium at the end of it. I can't imagine Mark Noble retiring without a farewell from the fan base or without giving um, a goodbye to the fan base either. And it's the last thing I want. I'm not ready for Mark Noble retiring, to be honest with you. It's going to be a sad day. He's probably the first player that I've really... There's obviously players that's retired that I've grown up with as a child. But from when I've sort of understood football, he's the first player that you've really sort of... What I've watched a career from start to finish of. Um, it's going to be a sad, sad day when he retires. He's obviously we'll find out as the season goes on. I do think he's got a role to play, and I think he'll play plenty of games for us. But as it stands, it's not looking too rosy for him, is it? Um, Goodson Party looked a little bit not great. Um, I think he's been hinting for about two or three years that he's got to start st stop playing as much football for West Ham. And he wants to see the younger players come in. Um, he obviously voices a pain with Grady Dean Gana. I think that was more of a nod to frustration of. Can we please, you know, we've got one that is, I think we've got the second oldest squad in the Premier League. Um, I'm pretty certain on that. So for Mark Noble, it depends how the season goes, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is his final year. I hope not, by the way. Loyalty in football has to work two ways, and we all complain when a player doesn't show loyalty to the club. And I think that we got it wrong with James Collins, and I think this is an opportunity as a football club to show loyalty to one of our players in Mark Noble and almost allow Mark Noble to decide when he retires and I hope that he's not forced into it by the club I hope that there's an option on the table where he can renew for another year if he wishes to um, his wages is what I would call reasonable for a Premier League player as a squad player he's never been on he's never been the biggest earner in the club I don't know he's on 50, 60, 70 thousand pounds a week or something I think that's okay for someone that's going to play half the games of the season or something so I will renew Mark Noble's contract on a one year by year basis um, until he decides it's time to, to walk away um, Robert Snodgrass, this is a bit different oh, first of all, there's there's a lack of clarity somewhat along around some of these players' contracts um, but Snodgrass is confirmed there is an option for the club that we trigger it, there's an extra year added to his contract so we don't even have to negotiate with him but he'll be 30, he's 33 at the minute. Um, I'm struggling with this one, to be honest with you. I didn't want to see him leave this season because I think in terms of his character, in terms of the fact that his professionalism, there's absolutely no complaints about either of those. I think he's a fantastic person to have around the dressing room. But I think I'd release him at the end of the season as it stands. I think he's I've been a good servant. I don't think he's had... A fair crack at the whip at West Ham certainly when he first arrived you know the chairman was quite harsh on him saying that his sons didn't want him at West his sons begged him not to play and then he had to, he did that tweet saying thanks for the support Mr Chairman but since he's come back from his loan spell I think he's been brilliant for us I think he's I'm not gonna lie I think he's a limited footballer um, but he, he works his nuts off and sometimes you need you, that overrules ability on some occasions I mean he's not a bad player, he's a good player, he's one of the best set piece takers I've seen at West Ham in recent years as well um, he's got a role to play this season which he's playing it and I think this is what it is now, we're away to play Man City tomorrow on Saturday and I don't think Snodgrass will be in the squad, I don't think he'll be on the bench and that's got to be an indicator of where he's at in terms of his squad role and I would be releasing Robert Snodgrass at the end of this season 
And Fabian Valbuena. This is a no-brainer for me, actually. This is one of the players with lack of clarity. Some suggest that, that we have an option where we can trigger it and he's got an extra year or two. Uh, I don't know which it is. But in terms of the official website and that, I couldn't see anything on there. So we'll have to wait and see for that. But I would give him a new contract. He's 29 years old now. Um, so he's sort of in his prime years. But I think he's done well. I often thought we were a bit overcritical of him. I think he was... You know, people... I assumed he would be sold in the summer. I didn't think David Moyes liked him. But I, I do. I like him. I, again, he's not the most elegant centre-back. He's a bit no-nonsense at times. But I think he's a good centre-back. I think what we paid for him, six million, I think is a bargain in this day and age. So I would like to see Balbuena giving a new contract to West Ham as well. Right, well, we've got a couple of tough ones coming up. Antonio and Fabianski, they're a bit tougher, right? We've got the tapping. David Martin, his contract's up as well. Uh, he's not had a huge role to play. But apparently he's really good with the, the youngsters at the club. So you have to imagine Nathan Trott's working with him as well. And I'd like to see him moved into the coaching role. But at the same time, his wages are so small for a club that I can see why we renew him. However, Nathan Trott's been registered this season because of his age. And if we have belief in Nathan Trott, then I think we should be shaking David Martin's hand, thanking him for Stamford Bridge and letting him go at the end of the season. However, we don't think Nathan Trott's good enough to make it at West Ham. I'd probably keep him on for another year just because how little his wages were. Um, in all honesty, I'd be looking at possibly keeping him on and selling Randolph, which is possibly risky, but that leads me on to the next player, which is Fabianski. Um, this is a tough one because I think he's been magnificent. What a signing he's been, you know, um, no complaints at all. But this season, when we've done the player ratings, when we started doing the player ratings for the patrons, we never done it in his first year. But if we had, I'd imagine Fabianski would be getting 8s every game. Sometimes 9 on a bad day, he'd be getting a 7, right? He'd be comfortably our best player. This season, when we did them post-lockdown, and this season, he's been getting 6s. Sometimes a 5. On a good day, he's getting a 7. That would suggest to myself, Alonso, in our opinions, that he's not quite as good as he once was when he arrived at West Ham. And it's a bit of a concern. Uh, he'll be 36 when the season ends, so he's no spring chicken anymore. I know keepers can play a bit longer than outfielders and stuff, but it's still getting to the end at 36 years old. I'd be looking now for a new goalkeeper, in all honesty. And I'd be looking to get in someone that's going to be a, a long-term number one. Who, I don't know. I'd be keeping an eye on how West Brom and... Um, Fulham do this season I think Sam Johnson and Ariola looks alright in goal I'll be looking at them closely I think we've missed a trick with Martinez going to Aston Villa could we spend 20 million on a goalkeeper when we've still got Fabianski and Randall probably not but an opportunity to get a keeper like Martinez doesn't come up too often does it but I just hope that we are scouting for a goalkeeper now with expectation we're going to have to spend big next summer. This has to be a priority position should Fabianski not remain at the club. However, I would keep him, hence selling Randolph. I would probably be looking at moving Randolph on to try and get a couple of million quid or something for him and giving Fabianski an extra year to be the backup goalkeeper next season. That's what my aim would be because I think Fabianski is a better goalkeeper than Darren Randolph. So I think naturally you'd want to try and get your better goalkeeper on the bench. And out of the two of them, I think it is Lucas. I know Randolph's a couple of years younger, but in a couple of years' time, when Randolph's ages would come into benefit, Nathan Trott should be ready. He'll be 24 years old then. He should be ready to be challenging for the number one spot, hopefully, or certainly being able to be good enough to be our backup goalkeeper. So Fabianski, I would renew, but only if you sell Randolph. However, if Randolph has to stay... I think I'd be releasing Fabianski. I think we, we need to be aiming to get a new number one goalkeeper for the season after next, unfortunately. But it's nothing against Lucas. I think he's been a fantastic signing. I think he's going to be good this season, but not as good as he once was, if you like. And it, I've got a small concern. Um, his distribution's never been the, the greatest, and it irks me at times, but what he does in terms of his saves keeping us in the game I mean the statistics at the minute I like my stats I know everyone doesn't but just bear with me the stats don't look too good he's conceded more goals than he's made than he's made saves um, this season for us which is not ideal is it and that leaves the last player Mikhail 
Antonio. And um, now 30 years of ages, contracts up at the end of the season. Now it's believed, again, I couldn't find anything on the official site, but it's believed that we've got an option for an extra two years so the club can trigger it and he's got a two year extension. But there's reports in the over the media the last couple of days that Mikel Antonio wants a new four year contract, which will also take him up till he's 34 years of age. And this is a tough one. Does he deserve a four year contract? I think he does. I think his performances justify us backing him. But does his injury record deserve a four year record? A four year contract? No. And that's where my thing is. If that two year option exists, then I think it's the best thing for the club. Done. Two years of Mikel Antonio. Happy days. We'll revisit it in 18 months' time if we have to. I would perhaps like to see maybe a sweetener of some sort that we give him a contract extension instead of triggering two years we give him a new deal which is worth two years we increase his wages or something to take him up up to towards the higher end of the club because he deserves it uh, as it stands i think he's possibly i think obona and rice are the first names on team sheet for me but he's certainly he's probably third to be honest with you and um, we don't have a replacement for him at the club if we were to play a longer period of games without Mikel Antonio through injury, I'd be a bit concerned to be honest with you as to how we would operate without him. I know we've got Yarmolenko, Sebastian Allaire, Jarlett Bowen that can all play up front, but none of them can do the job Antonio can do, I don't think. Um, he's, he's very important to West Ham, he's very important to David Moyes. So it's a tricky one, I can understand why the club are thinking about it, but I just think given someone with such a bad injury record, I know he's been fit for quite a while now, but every game he's having to get not patched up, but we're having to sort of wrap him in cotton wool a little bit. Um, I just I'm not sure I'd be too happy with a four year contract for him. It would, it would make me worry a little bit that we're going to be not stuck with him. But I just think it's bad business. That's all keeping someone with that injury record here for such a long period of time. But anyway, that's the six players whose contracts are up at the end of the season. That's what I like to do. So just to recap quickly, Antonio. That trigger that two year thing if we can. Um, Bob when I give him a new contract. Mark Noble, please keep him. I am not ready for Mark Noble leaving West Ham United. Fabianski, if we can make him the second one, good. If not, we're we'll looking at replacing him. And David Martin again. It sort of relates to Fabianski, but for someone on such little wages. But at the same time, we've got to make sure that Nathan Trott has a. A route into the first team, if you like. Um, let us know what you would like, John. So that's the six teams. I'm going to put a pinned comment in the comments below with the six players. Just copy and paste and write next to them what you would like to do. I'll be reading your comments um, at the bottom of this video. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And um, I shall catch you in a bit.